Hello YouTube, this is Alrighty Then, and today I'm going to show you how to make a instrument stand or a tool stand. Uh, here you see two examples of those. What I'm using is I'm using the old drums that came off of those big dump trucks. I welded a disc brake to the drum and then a shaft or a piece of pipe put a platform on it and then I can put my tool so in this case I have a little bandsaw that's mounted on top of this uh, tool base or a tool stand rather and then here I have two grinders mounted on the same tool stand and it works out great now these tool stands are great because you can roll them around real easy most tool stands that you get they're about uh, two by three uh, you know two by two feet wide they take up a lot of space so the area that they take up is really really big whereas you can see this pretty much just occupies exactly the same amount of space that the the tool occupies is exactly what the footprint is same thing with this one the one that I had made before was made out of wood and it worked but it was just kinda rickety and the more you use it the more it just kinda got wobbly and the screws got loose so today I'm making another one uh, for my drill press. Right now my drill press is mounted on the wall. This is my drill press right here. It's on a pretty cool system. I can lift up the whole box and move it along the rail here or move it down here. So it's just you lift up, you lift it up and it just kinda hooks onto the edge of these uh, these boards. But it's too congested in this area. I really don't have a lot of room to work. So by making this new tool stand for the shop I'll be able to move the tools around and put them outside so that all the dust can go outside and that way I don't have to worry too much about making a mess. So let me put this aside and we'll get started. So for this tool stand what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this base right here. I've got the front disc brake of uh, this old job that I did and I went ahead and I screwed on this wood piece to it. I'm going to go ahead and weld it to here, and since I do not have another piece of steel, this was the same bar and it's very thick, since I don't have another one of these, I'm just going to use this piece of PVC that I had laying around. And it's really wide, and what I'm going to do is, once this gets welded to here, I'm going to place this here like this, it's going to fit really nice and tight all the way down, and then I'm just going to screw into it. And that'll be my base. It's it's just going to be taking a vertical load, and this is like way overkill. But since it's stuff I have around the shop, it makes it a lot easier for me to just use what I have. So I'm going to get uh, the welder. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, get the welder started, and I'll start welding it, screw this on, and then we'll pretty much chop this off and uh, make a little platform for it. And this, like I said, is going to be for my drill press. So it's not going to be... Uh, it doesn't have to be super heavy duty and the screws will hold it just fine. Alright? Alright guys, I'm going to start uh, doing some welding here.
All right, guys, so I went ahead and I leveled the pipe on top of the base. And as you can see, I already went ahead and I did my welds. It's going to hold together real nice. I'm gonna, now I'm going to drill some holes uh, around the edge and go ahead and tap some screws into here so that it holds very tight. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that these drums, you can pick them up at the tire store. Um, at the, your, your, if you have a local tractor trailer or tire shop, um, I bought it for, two of them I got for free, the other two, the guy charged me five bucks. I would say it's a good hundred pounds, so it's a, it's, it's a good amount of, uh, five bucks is worth it for the steel that you're getting, and it's a great base, like I said, it's very, very heavy, which is what you want. So, um, by using this, you're recycling, you're repurposing, and they're just really phenomenal. And for five bucks, you can't beat that. The stands that you get at the Harbor Freight, Northern Tools, Home Depot, Lowe's, they're, you know, the base is really big, they're hard to move around unless you have the wheel kit that comes with them and even then it's a pain in the butt and it's just not worth it. For five bucks and a couple extra pieces of equipment if you have it, it's perfectly fine. So let's start making my holes. I'm also going to countersink the. Um, I'm going to countersink these just so that it looks a little bit better, and then once I get the base all tied up, then I'll go ahead and um, cut the top to the height that I want. Is that nice? Nice. So where's my? Let me get an X and a Y on this sucker. So that's level this way, and it's level that way. And now let me put another one right here. Oh yeah, it's in there like ragu boys. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more. You get the idea. I'll be right back. All right, now all the screws are in. If I ever wanted to move this, it's just a matter of leaning it over and rolling it out of the way. It's really easy. Takes the weight out of it. So now I'm going to grab my uh, uh, drill press and see how high I want to make it. One advantage of making your own tool stand is that you can make it as high or as short as you want depending on how how tall you are. So most tool stands will come at about 30 inches which is right about this height right here, 30 inches which that's pretty low. That's really low man. I want to be comfortable. So I think if I put the base right about here, the handles, if I put the, the base right about here, let me just, I don't even need to measure. I think if I put the base right about here, that will give me the same thing as this. Well, I don't make it like that. 
so I can still get to the I can still get to the components to change the drive. So I'm gonna go right here. Because don't forget I still have to make the platform to put that on top of that. So let me get cutting. Okay, for the for the plate, I went ahead and I, I cut this out and then I took just a regular two by six put the scrap piece on top of it, trace the inside diameter of the wood, and with my uh, miter saw, I just kind of chop, 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 until it kind of got close to where I wanted it, and then I just hammered it in with a dead blow hammer. This way it's nice and in. So I already went ahead and I did my pilot holes, and I'm going to go ahead and secure this to the base. That way that's not going to go anywhere. So now this is going to give me something to go ahead and screw my base on. And my base, I think, will be this piece of 2x10. It's nice and sturdy. And I'm just going to plop it on right here to center it. And pretty much just nail her down right into the, the base and the drill press is going to go right on top of that and that's going to go mounted on top of that just like this so that will be the perfect height for me to visualize my work for me to go ahead and do this and I can still come in here and um, change the speed of the drill press just by doing that. So it's the perfect height just like this. I get to work. And I'll use this piece of scrap wood as my base. That's going to be perfect. All right, let me just take take care of that. All right guys, here's the final product. You've got the drill press right there. And I think this was a uh, um, what's that? Big Lots. I think this was a Big Lots drill press and it's still working really good. It's still doing what it's supposed to. So here's the base. That's screwed into that. That's not going to go anywhere. Here's the base right here. All welded up. And now when I want to move it, just pull on it and just twist it and put it where I want to go. Just like that. And I'll put it right back where it was supposed to go. Well, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. This was alrighty then, and stay tuned for one more trick that I'm going to be doing here. Is I'm going to convert this into a belt sander. I wanted one of those little one-inch belt sanders. So I'm taking this right here, and I'm going to put some stuff to it and make a belt sander out of it. So stay tuned for more. Once again, this was alrighty then, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, Chuck E. 2009, Chuck E. 2009 had made a stand out of a tire. And it's, uh, it's kind of bulky and really big and a little bit more complicated than this. I don't know. But this way it rolls a lot easier. And as far as the vibrations, you don't need the tire for that. So this will keep your footprint really small. By having the heavier rim or by having this heavy drum, It'll keep it nice and steady for you so you can still maintain that same uh, footprint, small footprint. So once again, don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching guys. Appreciate it.